Hi everybody, it's Mr. Poller. In this video, I'll be discussing the topic of levels of organization for ecology. I want to take a second to define ecology again. Ecology is the study of interactions between different living things, but it's more than that. It's also going to look at the interaction that living things have with non-living factors that are present in the environments where they live. So there are six levels of organization in ecology, and as we look at these levels, they're going to increase in complexity as we add higher numbers of organisms. When we have more organisms, that means that there has to be a greater number of interactions. So when we're looking at the levels of organization, we're going to start out with the least complex level being that of species. We move up to population, community comes next, ecosystem, biome, and finally, the biosphere is the level of organization with the greatest complexity. So again, our least complex level of organization is that of species. Uh, species can be defined as a group of organisms that reproduce to make fertile offspring. The example that I've selected is this nice looking cat right here, the Canada lynx or lynx canadensis. Uh, now it's important to know that species is a human creation. This is something that we came up with to help us try to better understand our environment. And uh, there are examples in nature where the species barrier is blurred. So there can be sometimes members of two different species that are capable of inter interbreeding and producing a hybrid. So, so our next level of organization is population. Now species, we would be talking about one individual. Population, we're talking about members of the same species that live in a defined area. So again, my example for a species was the Canada lynx. Now if we consider my home state of Minnesota, we have the historic range of the Canada lynx shown in the very northern part of the state here, shaded in orange. So these are the areas where Canada lynx have been historically found in Minnesota. And we see on this slide here that the lynx sightings in Minnesota as of 2006 are really focused in the northern part of the state, uh, most of them in the Arrowhead region, uh, but some others in the other northern parts of Minnesota. Uh, so again, our level of population is going to include all of the links that are found in a defined area. The next level of organization is community. Now, communities refers to all the different species that live together in a defined area. So I've selected a specific part of Minnesota to talk about communities. I've selected the Arrowhead region, which is shaded here in red. It's the very northeastern part of our state. Now, if we were to visit the Arrowhead, uh, the different types of living things that we might find uh, could include moose. We could also find beaver. We could also see Canada lynx. We could also see black bears. We could also see bald eagles. And we might see loons. We could even, if we go fishing, catch a muskie. Now, all of the different living things that are present together in an area, these make up the community of that area. The next level of organization is that of the ecosystem. Now, an ecosystem, we move beyond communities, which again was all the living things in an area. So an ecosystem is also going to incorporate the non-living components of an area. So if we consider the Boundary Waters canoe area, we might see scenes that look like this one here, this one here, or this one here. The ecosystem is going to include not only the fish in the lake, not only the plants growing along the shore or the trees, but it's also going to include the non-living factors. So that's going to include the water in the lake, the gases in the air, the sunlight that's uh, allowing the process of photosynthesis to occur. So ecosystems include not only the living organisms, but also the non-living components of an area. When we're talking about ecosystems, we use the terms biotic and abiotic to talk about the living and non-living factors present in ecosystems. Examples of abiotic or non-living factors would include things like air, wind, rocks, mineral soil, temperature, water, 
nutrients like nitrates or phosphates. Biotic factors are going to be the living things present in an area. Mammals, fish, bacteria, plants, birds, insects, and fungi are all examples of biotic factors found in ecosystems. The next level of organization in ecology is the level of biome. Biomes are large groups of ecosystems that are going to share the same climate and have similar types of communities. So what are examples of biomes? One example of a biome is tropical rainforests. These are found near the equator in South America, Central America, Africa, and these are areas that are going to have warm temperature uh, and very high levels of rain. Other examples of biomes would include places uh, which are deserts. We see those right here, uh, some right through here in the southwestern part of the U.S. and Mexico. So let's take a look at the four different biomes that are found in the state of Minnesota. In Minnesota, we have, again, four biomes. They are coniferous forest. This is found in the northeastern corner of the state. We have tall grass aspen parkland in the very northwestern corner. Prairie grassland is most of the western part of the state. And in the southeastern part of the state into the central part of the state, we have deciduous forest. Now, let's take a closer look at these different biomes. So in prairie grassland, we obviously have grasses. Uh, we're going to also find things like the greater prairie chicken. Coniferous forests are highlighted by evergreen trees, pine trees. Uh, we're also going to find things like timber wolves in the coniferous forest region of Minnesota. In tall grass aspen parkland, we're going to have grasses, we're going to have trees like aspens, we're going to find oak trees, and uh, we're going to see things like elk. And finally, deciduous forest. These are forests which include mostly trees that lose their leaves in the fall. So oak trees, um, maples, uh, trees again that are losing their leaves in the fall. And then we'll find animals that are familiar, like an opossum. The final level of organization in ecology is the biosphere. This is the part of Earth where life can exist. It includes land, water, and the atmosphere. So let's close with a memory device to help you remember the levels of organization in ecology. So here it is, soda pop can exploding by bubbles. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I want you to remember the soda pop can exploding by bubbles. And what does this help us to remember? It helps us to remember that the lowest level of organization is species. The next highest level is population. That's followed by community, then ecosystem, next biome, and finally biosphere. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. You can always find more of my videos on Twitter or YouTube. Bye.